Hello, Dina Namona. Glad you could join us on the Pacific Way. Improving women participation in decision-making remains a key priority in many Pacific Island countries and territories. And this includes Solomon Islands, where women represent 50% of the population. This documentary highlights the Solomon Islands election back in 2010 and the use of the Temporary Special Measures TSM concept to get women into Parliament. It also tells the story of Rhoda Sikilambu, who tried to break the barrier of big men leadership and promote gender equality. The work is done, the process is done, the challenges have been met, and all the excitements I've felt since yesterday, um, it's over now, yeah? And I feel it's a victory. I feel it's a victory for women today. The transition from traditional leadership by chiefs to representative democracy has posed challenges for many Pacific Island nations. Representative democracy is relatively new in the Pacific, and since independence, countries have introduced varying political systems. Since independence in 1978, Solomon Islands has conducted elections for the purpose of selecting leaders in a democratic manner. This includes holding parliamentary elections with the aim of fostering political stability and a political climate that allows for sustainable human development. On August 4, 2010, Solomon Islands held its national general election. The Solomon Islands is an archipelago in the South Pacific Ocean, about 300 miles east of Papua New Guinea and about 1,200 miles northeast of Australia. With a population of around 520,000, the country is divided into 10 administrative areas, of which nine are provinces, administered by elected provincial assemblies. The capital, Honiara, is located on the north coast of the island of Guadalcanal and is governed by the Honiara City Council. Solomon Islands uses the first past the post system, which is a majority system. The winning candidate is the one gaining most votes. It uses single member districts and voters vote for candidates rather than political parties. Full of people started their first voting. In most elections, no one party has won enough seats for an absolute majority of seats in national parliament, resulting in the need to form coalition governments. Given the fact that only one representative is elected by a district, and due to cultural preferences and stereotypes regarding women's political leadership, women are underrepresented in Solomon Islands national parliament and local level. In fact, in Solomon Islands, there are no women represented at the national parliamentary level. The August 2010 national election saw more than 500 candidates contesting for the 50-seat parliament. According to the Solomon Islands Electoral Commission, 25 of the 508 candidates that stood in the election were women, down slightly from the 26 who stood in the 2006 election. With currently no woman representative in Parliament in the Solomon Islands, while about 50% of the population are women, improving women's political participation and representation is a pressing issue. Rhoda Sikilabu was one of the women candidates who stood for the 2010 general election. Her hope was to break the barrier in the traditional belief of big men leadership and promote gender equality. I am a citizen of the country, a woman citizen of the country, and I feel I have no fear to say I have all the right to be with the men, yeah? Um, to make decisions for the people. 49% of the women in the Solomons, they've got to be represented somehow. And 0%, uh, that's not good at all. Yeah. So, Born and raised in Isabel province, 
Rhoda made it her mission to visit as many communities as she could and address issues of concern. Despite the long-standing cultural barriers, she managed to deliver what her male colleagues were struggling to achieve, highlighting women's issues such as child mortality and maternal health as outlined in the Millennium Development Goals or MDGs. I've tapped about three millions assisting the communities. Uh, whether it be uh, vocational schools, community high schools, the mother's union work, just looking after people, water supply, sanitation, um, some income projects, solar system. And I feel that I don't I don't see that the men are, um, are really committed. The Ministry of Women, Youth, Children and Family Affairs has been working tirelessly to enhance the status of women in decision-making levels in collaboration with other women organizations, including UN Women. Well, we've played a, a very active role and a proactive role as well uh, in ensuring that government's policy in, um, to empower women uh, is uh, addressed sufficiently but effectively as well. So the ministry has taken a lead role uh, in, in collaboration with the National Council of Women, with our partners including UNIFEM, uh, Vosplom Meres Solomon and other women's organizations uh, including the Ramsey Missionary of Government. So we've got a good partnership going or the ministry is helped uh, by our stakeholders to uh, advance our uh, platform uh, to get women into decision making. The Ministry of Women, Youth, Children and Family Affairs supported the formation of Women in Shared Decision Making or WISDOM, a group to lobby for support for more women in Parliament in the lead up to the 2010 election after a request by the Ministry for introducing 10 elected reserve seats for women was rejected by Cabinet in 2009. This is a form of temporary special measures, a quota system which guarantees seats for women in Parliament by reserving seats for women, which are filled through elections. Such a system is successfully used in Papua New Guinea, Bougainville, where three seats are reserved for women, allowing women to gain political representation. Now, because of the fact that women uh, are not represented in parliament, or we were not uh, uh, lucky enough to have women in parliament, we resorted to uh, taking the TSM concept as another approach to get, getting women into parliament. We were really focused on the reserve seats for women. Uh, we came up with a submission um, that we took to the government caucus asking for 10 um, reserve seats for women in the Solomon Islands. So we were really involved in that. Um, we went with the first submission. We had a meeting with the government caucus uh, and they had asked us to go back and you know maybe um, do a lot more uh, um, you know, going out to the provinces and to see what women or people think about the reserve seats. And the second thing is that they thought that um, the 10 reserve seats we asked for in the submission was a bit too many. So we um, did that. We went back again with the second uh, submission. And at that time, when we went back the second time, um, we were told that there was no support from the government caucus. The Ministry for Women, Youth, Children and Family Affairs believes that leadership is a shared responsibility of men and women 
and the TSM concept should be used as a means for women gaining representation in Parliament. In recent years, many countries around the world have established elected reserve seats for women or other forms of TSM to help women overcome obstacles to political representation. For the Solomon Islands, the proposal tries to establish 10 elected reserved seats for women. One reserved seat will be allocated to each province, including Honiara. The concept also proposes that women will be elected to parliament by all registered voters and therefore do not represent women only. So what would the TSM concept mean for the Solomon Islands? Assisting the government and the United Nations, Emile Duituturanga has been working in the Solomon Islands as a consultant on women in leadership and TSM. It would mean that women's voice um, is heard in legislation and at the governing council, at the governing, you know, the parliament. Um, it would also mean uh, for women that a lot of the issues, you know, when we look at the MDGs for an example, child mortality, maternal mortality, which, you know, many of our Pacific countries are off track, particularly in Melanesia. The issues that women are always pushing for get to be heard, um, violence against women, which is a big issue. You know, despite the data and the facts, men just can't seem to push these issues in Parliament. So that, that's one thing that a lot of the issues of family welfare, uh, women believe that they would come in and be able to bring to the floor of Parliament. An important concept is capacity building of electoral stakeholders to understand the characteristics of the political system in the Solomon Islands. Francis Eero has been involved in the Bridge Workshop, building resources in democracy, governance and elections since 2005. Since 2009, UN Women has been conducting Bridge Workshops focusing on gender and election issues, including media awareness. You know, as a BRIT facilitator, I'm really involved in connecting BRIT's program for women. And um, I hope that slowly people within across the sectors, churches, organizations, and uh, village communities, you know, just, uh, they're, they're beginning to, to understand the importance of women involved in decision making. Because, you know, um, at the moment, it's a, it's a male dominant. Uh, a parliament in Solomon Islands. Catherine Atanakakia also ran in the 2010 general election. Originally from Kiribati, Catherine grew up in the capital Honiara and over the years has set up projects to assist girls and women make a living for themselves, similar to the aspiration of other women who contested. Uh, when I first started my campaign, there were lots of questions which was good for me because it only meant that people were sharing their issues and that is what I want to hear because it just makes my plans stronger and knowing what people really needed um, and after my second or third campaign it was more of a positive feedback from the crowd it was no more questions but all the support and what they want to know was to how can I get there how can I make it to Parliament and all I tell them is uh, it's through your votes you have the rights you are the government, the people is the government, and I say you have the power, and the power is in, on your voting day. The things that urge me to want to go into politics or in decision making is uh, like if you look at the country since the ethnic tension, um, women and children are suffer. Yeah, so we've been putting MPs or members to parliament. But there's nothing for us, especially the grassroots people. for a good result by Thursday. And um, as a citizen of the country, I have um, all the right to, to, to proclaim 
the rights of women, to enforce, put something in the, the minds of women, that we are supporting women for the changes we would like to see today. Warren Sikilabu has been a tower of strength for Rhoda during her years of campaigning. The Malaita man who has been following his wife in her campaign trail gave up his responsibilities as the head of the household to support Rhoda in her crusade to join parliament. Uh, I've been really uh, behind women, all women in Solomon Islands, but in particular behind my wife because I've seen the progress and the successes that she has uh, achieved. And uh, for me personally, I, I must say that I'm really surprised to see uh, big things that she has done for uh, our ward in Isabel province, uh, and especially for communities and the people, uh, for small projects, some big projects, some projects that even the national parliamentarians in our area could not uh, really do. Uh, she has done those. Rhoda Sikilabu is like a key spokeswoman for us now. And she came out strong in the paper straight after she was uh, elected as the Deputy uh, Premier of Isabel, advocating for TSM in the Solomon Islands, so that's a bonus for us. Interestingly, with this uh, new government, I, I know there are political problems, but it was interesting to note that in their policy document, they specifically stated that they would consider reserve seats in Parliament through increasing the number of seats from 50 to 70. And in the last parliament, before the election, a motion had gone through parliament to increase um, the numbers to 70. So in the constitution of the Solomon Islands, um, the number of seats in parliament can go up to a maximum of 70 seats. Like all general elections, allowing people to observe the significant process is a crucial way of ensuring that it is conducted in a free, fair and peaceful manner. The 2010 national election was observed by international election observers connected with the United Nations International Election Observation Coordination Team, while Development Services Exchange, DSC, and international partners also trained women domestic observers. The observers described the 2010 election as peaceful, although strong concerns were expressed about voter registration irregularities. I think people are more engaged in the process, um, but there's some fundamental problems still in terms of the way that the legislation works and people's understanding of the legislation and people's involvement in the democratic process and their understanding of the democratic process. So we've gone some way to, um, to assisting people to, to get themselves registered, but there's still problems with the, with the voter registration list and uh, a lot of that has to do with some of the legislation um, which, is, which is in place, which restricts the Electoral Commission. So I guess the fact that more people are talking about it and some people are, have concerns and are voicing out those concerns, I think is a good sign. It's showing that people are involved in the process and they're wanting uh, to demand change and reform. One of the success stories, or when you look at impact, um, we and the women of the Solomons and the coalition behind this um, believe that they have been able to influence public opinion, they have been able to influence uh, parliamentarians and the fact that this government has come in making a policy commitment is, is a huge um, achievement. While veteran politician Danny Phillip won a ballot of 50 successful candidates in the 2010 general election by a margin of three votes, this has not deterred women from contesting next time around. They say the journey has only just begun. I think there's a genuine, there seems to be a genuine desire. Uh, some of some research that is done out um, in the villages talks about the desire of people to have women in parliament. Um, but I'm, I mean, the voters decide um, whether they're ready to, to have uh, female candidates, and we'll wait till all those results come out. So far, there's 16 um, declared winners, and none of those are, are women. So I think the results will speak for themselves about what Solomon Islanders think. I want women to know that um, they, they have a place in Parliament. And once I am in there, men will understand the values that women can contribute towards the running of the government. All husbands in Solomon Islands should look at their wives if they have important roles and if they have the opportunity 
of uh, moving up uh, uh, certain steps in holding responsible positions, then the men should all be supporting. Solomon Islands politics is male-driven, reflecting the patriarchal nature of the society at large. Thus, the first-past-the-post system favours men because it does not allow for women candidates to stand in collaboration or share preferences with male candidates, as in the AV system. Even if women try, they often fail due to the fact that the system does favor the strongest candidate only, which is usually a man due to entrenched cultural views. However, with growing consciousness about gender equality and women's rights in the Solomon Islands, there is optimism that women will be given greater say in the governance and development of their communities and more active and meaningful participation in the parliamentary and political process. TSM and elected reserved seats for women could overcome this problem and increase democratic diversity in the Solomon Islands. Governance is no longer the exclusive domain of governments. The people have a say in how their governments and their countries are run. And women who make up 50% of the population in the Pacific um, are finally now saying, we're not going to sit back and wash dishes all the time. We will wash dishes and make a contribution on the floor of parliament. UNIFEM at that time, now UN Women, was very active in helping the respective governments to understand the different options that they have when they are discussing temporary special measures or electoral reform. So um, we have requested or we have been requested to provide training to the respective officials and we have done so quite successfully through a series of workshops but also technical advice. For wisdom and the women of Solomon Islands, there is hope that for future elections, the option for using a form of TSM will allow for women to gain political representation and that come the 2014 general election, Solomon Islanders will vote for women in recognition of their potential as political leaders. And that's all we have time for. To find out more about tonight's story or the Pacific Way, check us out on YouTube and on Facebook. Until next week, no for la, ta-ta.